Welcome along guys, well I'm on another first ride video and I'm on something which I have loved for years. This is my first impressions of this beautiful machine, the new 950 Hypermotard SP. <laughs> on wet slippery roads. This is going to be interesting. So this is the new 950, still the same 936cc motor, but they've they've done some work to this. They've changed the pistons, they've done some other magic. Basically they've, they've given it a few more of the brake horsepowers and a few more of the torques over the old model with revised pistons and camshafts and other good stuff. It was, revised exhaust system they've also made it about four kilos lighter than the old bike so in theory this could be my perfect motorcycle it's got one thing in mind this bike and that is hoonage i've ridden the old 936 version it was okay it wasn't the sp it didn't blow me away it had a lot of torque, but I, I, I was left feeling a little bit disappointed initially. It grew on me as I rode it, but there was an initial disappointment. They say that this new one is much more like the original 1100 air-cooled version, which people will tell you is the best type of motard. Ducati have tried to go back to that original roots of that bike. And you know what? Initial impressions is I think they may very well have succeeded. Blipper and quick shifter is fantastic. For a big V-twin, it's hard to get a decent quick shifter and blipper to work nicely. Ducati have managed it on this. <laughs> this motor really is all about the torque. It always was about the torque. And it's even more so about the torque. It seems that it does pull harder at the top end now but there's so much torque at the bottom end. I think Ducati says something like 80% of the torque is available below 4,000 revs. That's just insane. For this year, it also has the, the V4-esque TFT. Quite small, but I quite like it being small. I don't want a massive great display on this sort of bike. That is beautiful. Lovely analog style rev counter. Oh, it's a, it's a foot out job. That is a brilliant traction control system. Oh and a very, very good anti-wheelie system as well. Of course, you know, it's a motard. Do you really want anti-wheelie? Well, the great thing about this is you've got the choice. You can switch off the anti-wheelie and leave the traction control on. So it's one of those few bikes where those two systems are separated. That's what you want. You don't want to have to turn everything off to be able to do a wheelie, especially on a bike built for doing wheelies. I'm impressed so far. It's just what I thought it would be, what I hoped it would be. Oh, I might have to turn that. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to turn the wheelie control off. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Hazards. Oh. We've got to figure out a... Oh, that's the horn. How do you do it? Oh, that's doing something. Sport. I see. Quick shifter is lovely. The quick shifter's impressed me. Unfortunately, the quick shifter's only an option on the standard bike. Only the SP comes equipped with it. Oh, Jesus, look at this road. Throttle response is lovely. It's very crisp. Considering this bike is all Euro 5, I must say that the recent bikes I've tried this year, manufacturers have nailed the throttle response. Last year and years before, since Euro 4 came in, they've all really struggled to make a bike feel nice on the throttle. You know, they've always been very snatchy. KTM have nailed it this year. And this again, beautiful throttle response. Riding position on it is very comfortable, very motard-like. It feels moderately big between your legs, quite wide for a, for a supermotor. I mean, this isn't a pure supermotor because it's, it's a bit big, but 
It's a bike which offers the supermoto fun, but with a little bit of practicality and perhaps a bit of range built into it. It's aggressive, you're up high, your legs are sort of back, you could hang off it, you could get your knee down quite easily. Massive wide bars. It's a position I absolutely love. I love Supermotos. The clutch is a little bit awkward. It's lovely once you're rolling, very smooth, very nice, but that pickup when you pull away, I've stalled it a couple of times. It's sort of a little bit of a snatchiness to it. It's fine, it's just a case of getting used to it, but you just, just as you release it, you're like, oh, hang on a minute, it's just almost that final part of the clutch bite is almost on or off. Apart from that, once it's rolling, it's light, it's nice. I love that pickup. That initial punch makes an absolutely lovely bike to ride on the road. Grunts, I think this is about 100 Newton meters, just under 100 Newton meters of torque. Oh yeah. The front brake is very, really powerful. Very progressive. It's not M50s or anything. They're Brembo, of course, but they are beautiful. Oh, we break into the next bay. Combination of front and back brake in this weather. Maximise that braking potential. Of course, this has got an IMU now. This has got the cornering ABS. All of that lovely stuff, cornering traction control. In these conditions, that is fantastic to know you've got that beneath you. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I love bikes which are built for the sole purpose of making you chuckle. And this is absolutely one of those bikes. This also has the slide control from the Panigale V4, whereby if you're breaking into a corner, it'll let the back step out, but keep it in check. Slide control on a motard. I guess you should be able to do that yourself. <laughs> very well they've got a bit of top end on this engine now as well I was almost completely I was underwhelmed by the original I found the gearbox was very difficult to engage neutral and clunky the gearbox seems like butter on this that quick shift is like butter some of the things which just annoyed me with the original not the original but the, the, the 936 version they're just not there on this bike. What I've noticed, turning it on and off, it's remembered the wheelie control was off. It hasn't turned it back on again as it's been on and off with the ignition. It's remembered it's off. So that's it, it's off. Once you set that, it stays off. Brilliant. Why can't you do that with other bikes? I could definitely see myself on one of these. There's a little bit of initial uh, when you come off the throttle. But I am in the sport mode. If I went to a more touring or, uh, I think there's an urban mode I spied, that would probably work better if you were gonna go in town. I am in the full on attack mode. Yeehaw! I just watch these wet roads on the super courses. that this bike is too heavy to be classed as a proper motard. I guess it is the thing which puts people off. It put me off that the spec sheet, when you see how much these weigh, this is about 100, I think it's nearly two, just under 200 kilos wet. It's 177 kilos dry, I believe. So it is a, it's a little bit heavier than the Street Triple, but 
because it's got long reach suspension, because you're a bit higher up, because of the geometry of it, it makes it feel so light and flickable. You can tell it's a little bit heavier than an SMCR, but it doesn't feel like it's 30 kilos heavier, which is what it actually is. Is that a drive it? Uh, semi? No, not really. It's a shame. We're going to have to get on one of these in the summer months. I don't push it. I think Ducati UK actually want it back in one piece. Not in carrier bags. Ooh, a bit wet through here. wheelies over crests where have you been wheelies over crests i need that back in my life right i will stop and do a very quick walk around we'll have to be quick because it's getting dark already and the bike is absolutely minging now so <laughs> oh the leathers are minging salt everywhere i'm gonna have to wash this as soon as i get it home look what i've done to it it's absolutely minging. I'm sorry, Ducati. This will go straight home and that salt will be removed. <laughs> oh, March of CD wheels covered in salt. Oh, it's criminal. It's criminal. So there it is. There is the SP Hypermotard with the Olin's goodies, the gold Olin's shocks. They've, for the last couple of years, they've used Olin's on the front. It was the Marzocchi. Marzocchi forks they're now fully olins front to back there's the rear shock single-sided swinging arm the sp comes with the delicious marchesini wheels the twin exhausts it's now got like the original like the original 1100 and even this little tailpiece is very reminiscent of the original 1100 the trellis frame on the back again reminiscent of the original 1100 actually if you park the 1100 and this one side by side i don't think they'd look a million miles away they look very very similar this one just has a bit more of that modern gucciness about it the modern fit and finish brembo's as i mentioned not m50s i don't know what that model of brembo is called actually but they work perfectly well and all of the engine gubbins how dirty is that the frame this year i believe is made of thinner tubing to save a bit of weight um, so ducati have been through this whole bike to reduce weight a lot of work been done on the engine to increase power it's it's a much it feels much livelier much more aggressive much more involving than the older bike the older 936 version I'm talking about. Even though the engine is more or less the same, the engine is only tweaked and played with and fettled. It's, not, it's the same capacity. The exhaust is a bit 916-esque, where it comes around the pegs like that and up and over. And if you do put the full termi on it, I think it unlocks another nine or so brake horsepower, which would be rather delicious. Marchesini wheels. <laughs> absolutely filthy immediate cleaning required and there is the, uh, the little logo in case you forgot it bought the SP version let's hit the road and head back home and get this thing clean so there we go my first little look at the gorgeous 950 SP absolutely love it i'll be out on this again this is my first impressions i've got this for two weeks let's just hope the weather plays ball and i'll be out on it again and i'll bring you my final thoughts of this bike because this is a bike like it's, i can tell already you ride a bike for 10 minutes well i've been about 40 minutes you know straight away whether you're going to like it and i love it so the bad thing about this I better just mention it, is the price. The standard version is 10,500. Very reasonable. The SP version with the bling on, the one you really want, the one if you don't get, you'll be like, oh, I should have bought the SP. This one is 14,500. 
it's a lot of money when you think the new V2 Panigale is 15. Uh, it's, it's a lot of money for a supermoto. But it is a lot of bike. What I'm going to try and do is do a comparison between this and the standard, not in this weather, in the summer, and see if this is worth that extra money or whether you're just paying for, for bling bits. So thanks for watching, massive thanks to Ducati UK for loaning me this for a couple of weeks, really appreciated. It's the first Ducatis I've been on direct from Ducati UK, so hopefully, providing I don't smash this to pieces, we'll be on some more Ducatis. Hopefully the new V4 Street Fighter, that is also very me. And the new V2, a lot of the, lot of the, lot of the Ducatis I haven't ridden, it's the one mark which I've really not had access to. So massive thanks to Ducati UK for entrusting me with your fine steed. I will go home and wash this immediately, I promise. Thanks for watching guys. Appreciate your support as always. If you are new to the channel, please press that subscribe button, press that bell. I ride all sorts of new bikes and my own bikes. It's all about bike passion on this channel, I would say. I'm a bike nut, I love them, cannot get enough, so uh, I'm a habitual modifier as well. <laughs> so give me a follow, tap that bell, and you'll get notified of everything I upload. Thanks very much, see you later. This is power level one, which is full power. This thing is absolutely bonkers. It's also pretty quick. Yeah, all right.